But me, you're me, Louis T. Welcome to this Louis T. Network exclusive Commander's Log React. This was a pleasant surprise, and honestly, one that was needed. Okay, episode six couldn't have come at a better time, and the message that it delivered was absolutely one that we needed to hear. Now, I'm shocked that we got an episode six, and after watching that episode, we know we're going to get at least an episode seven as well. So they've expanded the commander's log this year. It was only five episodes, I believe, last year. Um, we're, we're up to six now with this latest release. And I can't tell you what a sense of relief episode six was from this standpoint. This was a very tumultuous week for us as fans. I know some of us out there, some of you rather, think that this whole Ron Rivera quote on Eric Bieniemy and the players coming to him has been blown out of proportion, and maybe it has been. But guess what? It happened. And I can tell you right now, I've seen this thing in more places than I can remember. Seeing something that was said by a coach and being run with. I mean, this thing is everywhere. I mean... I'm shocked at how many people have come out of the woodworks, have an opinion or have a take on what was said. They're taking it from different angles and coming at it from perspectives that I didn't even think of. And I'm like, this is really not what this was supposed to be. It should have never been said at all, which is the original point that we always go back to. This could have all been avoided. And, and it makes you think. Was this strategically done or not? I don't know. I don't care at the end of the day. You know what this did? Because if you are a fan of this team for a long enough time, then you have a severe case of PTSD. And that shit doesn't go away with a signature, with one person leaving the building. It doesn't go away after a day, a week, a month, a year. It takes time to build back the trust that was snatched from us when we were slammed into a mental purgatory by Daniel Snyder for the last two decades plus. And shit like what Ron pulled this week took you right back to feeling like shit, shit's all the same. Dan's still here. Nothing's changed. We're still locked in this mental purgatory. I was watching something. I think it was ESPN. I don't even know the lady's name. Never seen her before. You know I don't watch a ton of ESPN. But... This is something that I told you bothered me. There are going to be people who haven't heard anything about Washington's camp this year. They're not paying attention to us, and rightfully so. We're the team that didn't make the, the playoffs in the division last year. We're starting a fifth-round pick at quarterback this year. You know, who, who thinks that Washington's going to do anything? So you haven't heard, you haven't been checking for us, and it's the first thing you've heard coming out of Washington camp. And she said, with a straight face, this woman did. I haven't heard anything from Washington Commanders camp all summer. This is the first thing I've heard, and it's negative. And I thought to myself, that's the problem with this whole shit. It's for those who haven't been following us, and you can say, we don't care. Well, guess what? As fans who have dealt with this shit for the better part of two plus decades, we do care. We're sick of it. We thought this was behind us. And it made us feel like we were going through this all over again. It felt like deja vu. And so this episode six, albeit brief, was a firm reminder of, bro, it's not the same. You're not trapped in that mental purgatory anymore. There is hope. New days are coming. This was a little setback. It was a slight blip. On the radar, and as I mentioned, once we start playing football, this shit will be a moot point until we hit that crossroads where you either win and everybody says Eric Bieniemy is validated or you lose and everybody starts saying, see, see. But once we start playing football, you quiet a lot of that noise. That starts tonight with the first preseason game against the Cleveland Browns. However, episode six of the Commander's Log was so necessary because it said to the fan base, hey, 
celebrate once again. You're free. And just in case you forgot, because this week felt like you were trapped again, here's a reminder that you're free. And this is not, I repeat, not what it once was. We're going to change things here. And so they took us through the full changing of the guard experience from the initial press conference after the vote came in 32 to nothing unanimous that they passed through the sale of the team to the Josh Harris group from there to him calling into the radio station and buying everyone a beer to him showing up having the initial press conference with the staff and everyone to say hello and all of that good stuff to then going to the rally to then doing the actual formal press conference and then the alumni dinner and it just took us through that entire whirlwind of probably 48 to 72 hours in which we were euphoric and you got to replay that all over again and you got to see the excitement on all these fans faces and all of the alumni who had been shut out for decades because of Dan's pettiness for years who felt like they didn't have a voice you know, to hear from them, to see them, to see the smiles on everyone's faces. It, it was a reminder that was so necessary. After a week like the one we just experienced. And I know, some, again, some people feel like, oh, this situation is blown out of proportion. You guys are being overdramatic. Again, to those people, I say, I can't tell you how to feel. I know what Ron Rivera's comments and the backlash from them. I know how they made me feel. I can't tell you how they made you feel. You might have just said, ah, that's a dead issue, non-story, what's next? Good for you. That's not how I interpreted that. And so being reminded that Ron may not be here when the changes take place. When we finally get to experience what it's supposed to feel like being a fan of this organization. The fact of the matter is, new ownership is here. We have to be patient. Let this process play itself out. I really want to win. And, and he talked to Ron Rivera and he pretty much said, we're going to do everything we can to try to win on the field immediately. And Ron's talking about winning consistently. He better win this year. You can't worry about next year or the year after that. You better win this year or there won't be a next year for you as the head coach of the Washington Commanders. It was a, a well done episode. One that brought numerous smiles to my face. You know, Magic Johnson getting people pumped up, chest bumping people. Yeah, I mean, that, that kind of stuff gets you excited. Watching the interaction between the alumni, how proud they were. You know, them standing up, introducing themselves. That shit gave me goosebumps. I can't speak for you. Doc Walker stands up and says, 1982 eternity. Daryl Green said, 20 years. I ain't going to give you the years I played. I ain't going to age myself, but I, I gave them a dub. Sitting there and, and seeing how excited not just the fans were. We know how excited we were. And how excited we are. But to see the former players, Coach Gibbs, everyone that knew what was transpiring here, but really didn't have a voice or felt like they didn't have a voice that was loud enough to affect change, now speaking and saying, hey, the legacy that we created here does matter. And we'd like to be here to help affect change and bring back and restore the glory that used to be the Washington Redskins. 
And whatever the new name is or whatever the name continues to be, whether it's commanders or they change it to something else, we want to make sure that this organization reflects the foundation that we built in the 70s, into the 80s, into the 90s, the early 90s. I want to win so bad. I can taste it. However, in my mind, I also understand. And this, this week was a reminder of that. And watching this episode made me think of that. That the people that ultimately may help us turn this thing around, they might not be here right now. I have tunnel vision very badly, for those of you who don't know. My tunnel vision is horrendous because for me, I can't see past this season and trying to win at all costs. Trying to find and establish a, a franchise quarterback. I can't see past that. For those who want to lose, who want Ron fired, want Jason Wright fired, want to start all over, you know, get Martin Mayhew, Marty Herney, everybody out here, clean house and start anew. More respect and props to you for being able to see the big picture and, and look that far ahead into your crystal ball. For me, I don't really give a shit who the head coach is, who the GM is. I just want to win. And if that means Ron gets another year, Martin Mayhew gets another year, so be it. But I want to win this year. And watching that video reminded me that, hey, anything's possible this year because the black cloud is gone. It's a new day. And maybe it's finally our turn to catch lightning in a bottle. And I know that we want more than that. We don't want to just be 11 and 6 this year and go back to being 7 and 10 next year. Because that's what lightning in the bottle really is. It's a one-off. But it doesn't have to be. You could catch lightning in the bottle this year and have that momentum that you built carry over into next year. And then all of a sudden, it's no longer lightning in a bottle. It turns into a triple P, which is a perennial playoff participant. And all of a sudden, we've made the playoffs three out of the last four years or three years in a row, four years out of five. But it starts with one. I want that one year to be this year. And that episode six Restored hope once again. It, it, you know, and, and this thing can be fleeting sometimes. And, and, and Ron's comments this past week didn't change how I felt about this year or this team. But it did make me feel like I was in the twilight zone. Like nothing had changed. Temporarily, I felt like, here we go again. This was a reminder that I needed that you probably needed and you didn't even know that you needed. If I didn't know better, I'd say Daniel Snyder was still here and he strategically placed this video here on this Thursday before Friday to take the distraction away of what had happened because that's a Daniel Snyder move like he did with the Sean Taylor tribute. A lot of shit swirling around, a couple of you know new uh, suits and, and investigations Ah, uh, let's honor Sean this week. They'll forget about all that other stuff. Of course, they botched it, and no, we didn't forget about it. Just added that to the list of F-ups throughout your tenure. So, it, this field felt almost too well-placed, but I'm, 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 I know that this is what they do. Every you know When they do release a video, it's on Thursday. So, nothing here was out of the ordinary. It just so happened to be this week when they did it and we needed it. Whether you knew it or not, we needed it. It was a, it was a great episode chronicling those 72 hours or so of this 
team and this fan base and this organization having its hope restored. Watching the minority owners, watching the majority owner and everyone come together, rally the troops, Magic Johnson talking, Mitchell Rails talking, Josh Harris talking, and everyone kind of delivering a similar message. We're going to restore this organization into what it once was when it was held up as one of the best in not just the NFL, but in professional sports. I believe them when they say that. And I've talked to 76ers fans. You know, some don't have the most flattering things to say about Harris, but I'd say 85 to 90% of them said he's going to give you every resource that you need to turn this thing around. It won't be for a lack of trying. And you know what? As a fan, that is all you can really truly ask for. The excitement on their faces, his family's faces. You know, one thing I did get a chuckle out of his son, one of his sons. Um, you know, was there. And it looked like somebody might have just handed him a commander's hat because he still had the little tag in the back on, like, come on, bro, you got to be better than that. But outside of that, (laughs) it was 25 minutes or so of pure ecstasy. Do yourself a favor and just bask in it. Whether you've done it already or not, If you were in attendance, relive it again. If you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor, watch it. It'll give you the warm and fuzzies all over again. And after the week we just had, heading into our first preseason game, I think we actually needed it. Whatever the case may be. Looking forward to episode seven. Six was phenomenal. And I really think it was the commander's log that I wanted but didn't know that I needed. Let's go win some football games, man. (laughs) Let's go win some football games. I'm looking forward to that. It'll make all of this so much sweeter. You know, I watched Quarterback again. Such a great series. And my wife hadn't seen it. And I watched it without her and she was not happy about it. Didn't know she was going to want to watch it as much as she ended up wanting to watch it. So I I said, I'll watch it again with you. It was really good. So I watched it again with her. You know, for all the people complaining about EB not being, you know, more involved, I don't really know what you were looking for. I thought he was plenty involved. Guess you were looking for a bunch of one-on-one conversations with Patrick Mahomes. There weren't a lot of those with anybody, to be honest. You know, there were a couple with Matt Nagy. A couple, a lot of them were with Andy Reid, the head coach. But he had a couple of times where every time he came and sat down, where there was something you know, great or something rough, EB was one of the first guys that sat down right next to him. You may not have heard him say anything, but EB was one of the first guys to sit over there and and start looking at the tablet with him. I don't really know what you guys want. When Patrick didn't want to go get the x-ray, EB said, bro, you got to go in there and get the x-ray. Again, I don't really know what you guys are looking for. I know I'm excited about EB's presence here, the changes that are being made on the offensive side of the football, and I think it's going to prove to be huge in the amount of dividends that it yields for this football team this season and maybe into the future. Anyway, that's going to do it for me, your man, Louis T, and the Commander's Log Episode 6 Recap. It's a great episode. I'm probably going to watch it again. I'm not going to lie. It's, it quickly went to 
the top is one of my favorite episodes. Because you really got to feel like you were a part of that experience. They took you, I mean, so behind the scenes with that one. Everything was, it felt intimate. Like it was supposed to. Even the conversation he was having with Roger Goodell. I mean, it was brief. But, I mean, they're standing in like a kitchen in a cafeteria waiting to come out to talk to the media for three minutes or whatever it was, 15 minutes or whatever it was. Like, it, it felt like we were being taken on that roller coaster ride. That, that entire, like I said, whirlwind of 72 hours or so, we were taken on that journey. It felt great. And we needed it. <laughs> That's going to do it for me, your man, Louis T. You guys get out of here. Get yourself ready for some Washington Commanders preseason ball. Yes! Bart Scott can't wait. When that meets its conclusion, you know where to meet me here on the Louis T. Network. We'll chop it up, break it all down, talk about everything that we saw and prepare ourselves for what is probably going to be the biggest week of the summer. This next week against the Ravens, practice, and then the game on Monday night. We'll see how they handle everything. Can't wait for all of it. Until then, you guys, have a good one. Take care. Louis T. Network.